let us proceed ahead with the revision capsule on investment account. So I prepared a simple mind map for it. So first, some provisions of AS 13, and then we talk specifically about accounting for debt and accounting for equity. So investment is basically for earning either a periodical income through dividend in case of equity shares, interest in case of debt. So this is for equity, this is for debt, and rental is for real estate. But for a real estate, AS13 uses a fancy name. It calls it as investment property. So investment is with the objective of earning periodical income through dividend interest or rental or for capital appreciation. So there are certain investments which are not covered within AS13 or there are certain aspects of investment accounting which are not covered. So when I talk about investment accounting, what do I really mean? Investment accounting basically involves various phases. What are the various phases? Let me explain here. So when I say investment accounting, I mean to account for acquisition of investment. Then I need to talk about recognition of income on investment. Then I need to talk about disposal of investment accounting. I also need to talk about carrying amount of investment for balance sheet purposes. So these are the multiple things which I need to talk. Out of this, this is covered in AS 13. This is income earned on investment is covered in AS 9. So recognition of interest or recognition of dividend and the rental is a revenue for a person that is covered under AS 9. But in this chapter, we are also going to talk about it. Operating and finance lease is excluded from AS 13 because it is covered in AS 19. Income from retirement benefit plan, that is a pension plan. So let's say LIC has created a pension plan whereby various companies contribute to that pension plan and LIC guarantees a pension that is covered in the books of LIC under accounting standard 15. Investments of life insurance corporations that is covered by IRDA guidelines that is not covered by AS 13. It is covered by IRDA guidelines. Mutual fund, venture capital funds or banks and financial institutions, they are governed by RBI or SEBI guidelines. They are not covered by AS 13. Assets held as a stock in trade is covered by accounting standard 2, which deals with inventory valuation. So what we are going to talk in AS 13 is acquisition of investment, disposal of investment, carrying amount, and related disclosures, obviously. So disclosures relating to investment. That is also covered in AS 13. So let me give you a AS 13 at a glance through a mind map. So this is AS 13 at glance. For the purpose of accounting, investments are classified into two parts. Current investment, which we call as short-term investment. The criteria for short-term investment is they should be readily realizable. That is, they should be liquid. Now, for example, when you invest in listed company shares, they are liquid because you get the money within two days of doing a transaction. Or when you invest in a mutual fund, you get the money in about four to five days from making an investment. So they are liquid. Readily realizable does not mean within few minutes or within few days. It should be liquid. You should be able to get the money quickly. There is no definition of quickly. And your intention should be to hold them for one year or less than one year. They are called as current investment. Anything which is intended to be held for longer period than that is called as a long term. But remember, after you purchase an investment, your intention may undergo the change. So long term may be converted into a short term or a short term may be converted into a long term. 
So how do you show them in the balance sheet? That is a carrying amount. I'll come down to computation of cost. For a current investment, they are shown at lower of cost and fair value. Cost and fair value. I did not say NRV. So if there is a reduction in the fair value below the cost and any reversal thereof is recorded in the P&L. So I purchase the share at let's say 98 rupees per share. Its market value or a fair value went down to 68 per share in the year 2019-20 due to COVID-19 impact. So this loss of 30 rupees will be debited to P&L. But 20-21 is the year where the liquidity came in the market and the opening value will be 68 but the let's say you sold it for or closing value came out to let us say 105 so this difference will be recorded in the p and l assuming that you have sold it if you have not sold it you will account reversal only up to previous cost so if it is not sold and it is valued at 105 the entire difference will not go to the p and l reversal thereof reversal of earlier 30 will be credited to p and l so 68 plus 30 98 98 tak jo amount hai wo main p and l ko credit karunga 98 ke upar jo 7 rupees hai that will not be recorded because it is an unrealized profit so let's say in q1 of 2020-21 so 105 per closing value chala gaya. So 30 will be credited to P&L. So current investments are valued at lower of cost and a fair value. Long term investments are generally valued at their cost. Decline other than temporary, that is a permanent decline to be changed or to be charged to profit and loss account. There are indicators of permanent decline like the investing company is suffering cash losses, its capital has been eroded, that investing company is facing going concern issues, its market share for the commodities or the goods that it sells has declined substantially, it is not able to obtain additional finance for doing a business. These are some of the indicators of permanent decline in the value of investing company. So if there is a decline other than temporary it should be charged to profit and loss account decline can be reversed when the value of investment rises normally when there is a decline we do not credit investment account we pass an entry for the decline as under entry is p and l account debit to provision for diminution in the value of investment provision for diminution decrease now, sometimes the evidence of decline may be available to you after accounting year is over. My accounting year as an investor ends on 31st March. I had invested in a, some company. There was a decline on 31st March in the value of that company, but I came to know about decline in the month of May for that year. May 2021, I come to know about a decline which had already taken place on 31st March. If investor comes to know about decline, if investor comes to know about decline which has already taken place as on balance sheet date, Decline as on balance sheet date. Investor comes to know about decline as on balance sheet date. After balance sheet date. But before finalizing his accounts. Before finalizing his accounts. Then apply AS4. AS4 talks about events occurring after balance sheet date this is called as adjusting event decline in the value of investee company had already taken place on 31st march just that i came to know in the month of may i should pass entry in the month of may but the date of entry will be 31st march i repeat entry physically will be passed in the month of may because i come to know in the month of may but 
the decline relates to the condition or situation existing as on balance sheet date so decline will be recorded on balance sheet date only so this current investment cost or fair value should be determined either on individual investment basis or by category by category but not on overall basis so you have equity shares you have debentures of uh, government uh, bonds you have investment in debentures of corporate bonds ye category ho gaya equity shares government bonds corporate bonds wo category by category aap kar sakte ho best is share by share script by script item by item but total of all categories and total cost of all category and total fair value of all category if you do like that you are in violation of principle of as 13 what is the cost of investment in case you have paid the cash consideration purchase price when actual cash has been paid shall be actual cash price that you paid including all incidental charges including all incidental charges that you paid for acquisition of investment so stamp duty brokerage securities transaction tax stock exchange turnover fees gst on that all of that shall become part of your cost but if you have done bar barter exchange you have got a investment in exchange for something else then right hand side applies you issued the security and then you got made a investment you issued security of shares of your company and you got shares of some other company then you have to take a fair value of security issued by you cost of investment shall be fair value of security issued if you got in exchange of asset like you gave your asset and you took the investment investment will be accounted at fair value of asset given up or fair value of investment acquired whichever is more clearly evident what do you mean by clearly evident whichever is easily available in the market whichever is more traded in the market easily available in market usko consider karke aap cost of investment decide karo next disposal of investment whenever you sell a investment if you sell all of your investment calculation of profit loss is very easy you don't need first in first out or weighted average cost method because you have sold all investment so ascertain the carrying amount carrying amount is a balance in the investment account at that point of time ascertain net disposal amount net disposal is after deducting brokerage and transaction cost so b if a is greater than the b that is carrying amount is higher carrying amount is book value if book value is higher than the sale value you debit p and l charge difference to c and l if a is equal to b no action is required a is lesser than the b credit p and l charge matlab debit p and l but if you sell investment partially then you have to use either first in first out or weighted average cost method to ascertain the carrying amount so under fifo investments made first shall be deemed to be sold first under weighted average cost you should find out total cost as on that particular date divided by quantity as on that particular date before the sale transaction has taken place and then you should find out profit or loss so if there is a profit credit p and l if there is a loss charge p and l reclassification expect a question on this in the exam so you can reclassify short term investments to long term if you reclassify from short term to long term transfer them at lower of cost and fair value so cost or fair value whichever is lower lower of this bracket cost or fair value if you are doing long term to short term cost or book value whichever is lower cost or book value whichever is lower at that amount you should transfer disclosure what should you disclose as per as 13 whatever policy you adopted for determination of carrying amount like are you determining the carrying amount on fifo basis or are you determining your carrying amount on weighted average basis income from interest but gross income before deducting tds 
gross is without TDS. Gross amount earned from interest, dividend, rental, separately for long term and short term investment. TDS on that gross amount should be shown separately. So, you have to disclose your TDS should be shown under the head advanced tax paid by you. It's a taxes paid. Profit loss on disposal of investment along with their carrying amount. If you have made an investment in securities of some company which is in foreign country and there are restrictions on selling that investment, write about significant restrictions on ownership or realizability of investment or remittance of the amount or proceeds of disposal. Aggregate amount of quoted and unquoted. Quoted is listed and unquoted is unlisted. You should give the breakup how out of total, how much is listed, how much is unlisted. Aggregate amount means this cost ka breakup. Then you have to market value ka bhi breakup dena padega only for quoted investment. For, for unquoted investment, you have aggregate fair value rather than the market value. Word use should be here. Fair value for unquoted investment. Any other disclosure required by some law, then you should give that particular disclosure. This is what AS13 talks about. Then we come down to accounting for debt and equity investment on which you should expect a numerical question. This the first part was AS13 on which you are going to get a descriptive question where you have to write provisions of AS13. In any accounting standard, the bold italic portion in the bare text is the main provision. So you can revise either this mind map or you can read bold italic provisions for your reference. ICS has given you one booklet called as accounting pronouncements. Within that, you will find a bare text of the accounting standard 13. Within that, there is a bold italic portion, some paragraphs. Those are key provisions of AS 13. So for a descriptive question, now whatever we are covering is relevant for numerical question. In case of a debt investments or debentures, when you acquire the price that you pay for debenture can be either X interest price or can be come interest price. X is excluding interest and come is including interest. Transactions can happen at any point of time, but the interest payment by the company is only on the record date. So company says we will pay the interest on 30 June and 31st December only for first six months and the next six months. But transaction can happen at any point of time. Let's say transaction takes place on 31st August. So when a transaction takes place on 31st August, interest for July and August has already been accrued. So the buyer of debenture has to pay true price of debenture plus the accrued interest for two months. But accrued interest paid by him for the two months is not his cost. It is going to be reimbursed to him by the company on 31st of December. So we say true cost of debentures is what you paid for debentures and two months is accrued interest. So while doing accounting, I should debit investment account by true cost of debentures and interest account for accrued interest. So interest payment date is 30 June, transaction is 31st August, payment date is 31st of December. So price paid by the buyer will always be come interest price, which includes true price of debenture and accrued interest of two months. This accrued interest will always be on face value. So you can do calculation in terms of months or you can do calculation in terms of dates. In exam, prefer months, calculations become easy. So Whenever you do in a debt, transaction in debt, on purchase, what is the cost to you and what is the amount that you pay are different things. The cost to you is X interest price plus the transaction cost. Now while calculating transaction cost, the key point comes up is a brokerage. Now brokerage should be logically on come interest price because always in real life on the stock exchanges, whatever prices are there are always come interest price but for exam purpose, Assume brokerage, assume brokerage is on price given in the question. So price given in the question can be either come interest price or it can be X interest price. So at the time of purchase, brokerage is added. At the time of sell, brokerage is deducted. But the money that goes from your bank account is come interest price plus the transaction cost because you have to pay the interest. The interest paid by the buyer to the seller is not a cost to the buyer because it is going to be reimbursed. It's like an input tax credit. When you sell, 
your effective sell value that you get is x interest minus transaction cost minus that is brokerage come interest minus transaction cost is what you are going to receive in your bank but your effective sell value is x interest minus transaction cost so remember your per cost or a sell value on effective basis is always calculated with reference to x interest price then what are the journal entries that you pass when you purchase an investment investment account debit always x interest x interest plus brokerage interest on investment account debit accrued interest to bank account then whenever you receive the interest interest receive job karenge uska entry likha nahi idhar but whenever you receive the interest receive interest so we don't ask a question this interest is for which period whenever we receive the interest we simply say bank account debit bank account debit to interest on investment account so automatically what happens is the balance in interest on investment is transferred to profit and loss account at the end of the year that balance absolutely reflects interest for the year so when you purchase a investment pass a entry investment account debit interest account debit to bank account when you sell it exactly ulta bank account debit to investment to interest but investment account is x interest minus brokerage profit loss is ultimately calculated using either fifo or weighted average that will be if it is a profit investment account debit to profit on sell if it is a loss loss on sell to investment remember if your accounting date uh, sorry your year ending date and year ending date should be compared with record dates for payment of interest if they do not match if they are not same if they are not same like your year ends on 31st march but a company pays interest on 30 june and 31st december then you will have a concept of interest accrued but not due interest accrued but not due so we should show this interest receivable entry will be this is our income at the end of the year at end of year your entry will be interest accrued but not due which is nothing but outstanding interest interest accrued but not due account debit to interest account to interest account and you reverse in next year you reverse in next year whenever you reverse please remember in a ledger account you should not write this in you should not write this in your investment column you should write this in interest column profit loss can be computed under fifo or weighted average in fifo we assume cost is out of earliest purchases in weighted average we have to find a balance in investment account as on the date of sale that is just before sale huh? as on date of sale matlab just before sale to aapke investment account ka balance nikalna hai before sale and then you calculate profit loss as under sell value of investment sell value of investment kya rahega bachcho x interest minus transaction cost less transaction cost ye aapka effective sell value rahega and how do you find the cost balance in investment account divided by total quantity into quantity sold so this is profit loss computation under weighted average cost and nahi under under weighted average cost method so that will be profit loss in fifo you have to find out each lot each purchase that is profit loss when we come down to equity investment accounting we have to learn about three special transaction first is a dividend accounting this dividend accounting is given partially in as9 partially in as13 so dividend in the books of investor is a income but as a investor you can recognize a dividend only when right to receive the dividend is established right to receive the dividend is established after company has declared the dividend not before that so dividend if it is related to the year prior to the purchase of shares you have to identify dividend is relating to which year i received dividend in the current year but it is for the previous year and i purchase the shares in current year 
so if dividend is for the year related to prior to purchase of shares we assume that while purchasing shares we have paid for a dividend so in this case we have paid for dividend at time of at time of purchase of shares so we have paid for dividend at the time of purchase of shares hence we credit dividend to investment account it is called as pre acquisition dividend so entry this is governed by as 13 entry kya hota hai bachcho bank account debit to what investment account bank account debit to investment account is a journal entry if dividend is relating to the year accounting year after the date of purchase of shares so you purchase shares in april 2020 20 and the dividend is for 20-21 it is post acquisition dividend if dividend is 1920 it is pre acquisition dividend but you should check are you really eligible to receive the dividend eligibility to receive the dividend or not to receive dividend depends on record date you should be shareholder as on record date so post acquisition dividend is credited to pnl this is as per accounting standard 9 in the books of the company we account for dividend in the year in which dividend is declared not in the year to which dividend is related year in which it is declared so it is appropriation of profit in the books of company reserves come down that is dividend accounting bonus shares in the books of investor no journal entry is required we just enter the quantity effective cost per unit comes down in case of bonus shares because cost is spread over more number of shares this is in accounting in income tax law when you learn capital gain chapter you will learn bc srinivasa shetty where the section or income tax law says cost of bonus shares acquired is zero but whenever there is a bonus share be careful if fifo method is given if fifo method is given bonus is allotted lot by lot i had made a purchases th on three different dates then whatever bonus is given is applied respectively to each date and the cost of each investment is required to be calculated i had dictated one such sum to you during the class in case you are able to remember accounting for bonus shares is different taxation of bonus shares is different this leads to a creation of a planning for tax in the books of the company bonus share is a capitalization of reserves reserves are converted into share capital bonus shares are always issued at face value they cannot be issued at premium because bonus shares are out of reserves reserves can be either divisible or non divisible as per law we have separate chapter on that investment property is a investment in a real estate so an investment property is a investment in the land and building that are not intended to be occupied substantially for use by or in the operations of the business or investing enterprise hum inko use nahi karne wale they are held for renting it out it is not held for use it is held for renting or held for sell not held for use assets which are held for use are your non current assets or current assets maybe depends and investment properties accounted as per cost model prescribed in accounting standard number 10 plant property and equipment that is historical cost cost model is a historical cost the cost of any shares in a cooperative society or a company the holding of which is directly related to the right to hold investment property is added to the carrying amount of investment property whenever you purchase a shop or a flat or a building you have to also purchase a shares of cooperative society in which that flat is situated so you have to purchase shares of that cooperative society so you pay for a flat plus you pay for shares a nominal amount that nominal amount should also be added to arrive at a cost of investment property another issue in case of equity shares is a right issue so 
right issue is whenever a existing company comes up with the new issue of shares it has to give first offer to existing shareholders if existing shareholders are not willing to come subscribe then only it shall go to the outsider this is technically known as right of preemption available to existing shareholders so there is a record date and on a record date company comes up with the certain ratio so if i say right issue is in the ratio of 2 is to 3 it means two rights for every three shares held for every three shares held now let us say particular investor had 3000 shares so he will have 2000 rights now it is not necessary that he has to exercise the right voting is your right you may exercise you may not like that 2000 rights you have got either you can exercise or you can renunciate or you can do combination of these or you can do nothing so primarily three option exercise the right sell the right or do nothing or combination of these three it is all up to you so in the books of investor if he does nothing he neither subscribes nor he renunciates the right no journal entry is required but if you subscribe to the right issue it is as good as new purchase of shares the entry will be investment account debit investment account debit to bank account but so when you purchase shares you pass investment to bank only if you receive dividend for the year prior to the date of purchase then bank account debit to investment account it is not like a debentures debentures mein hum jab purchase karte hai tabhi hum price ko kam interest price ko do tukdon mein baatte hai kam interest price debentures ke case mein kya kya tha maine it was true price which was called as the x interest price and then we had talked about accrued interest in case of equity shares there is no such bifurcation done we pass entry investment account debit to bank account if we receive the dividend for the year prior to the date of purchase of shares we assume that when we purchase shares we have already paid for dividend and then dividend is credited to investment account if you renunciate if you renunciate the rights then generally right proceeds are credited to profit and loss account whenever you sell a right renunciate right matlab it is sell of right i did not say sell of shares right is different shares are different right leads to the shares so you are selling the right so it is treated as your revenue receipt it is credited to profit and loss account but there is some exception very very rare situation that exception comes up so whenever you prepare a investment account you have a column like date particulars number or face value amount amount is investment column and then you have income column income column represents dividend as well as proceeds of sell of right you should write a note below that the column is income column hence proceeds of sell of a right are credited to that income column or if you write only dividend column these proceeds go to profit and loss account so what are your revenue receipts your revenue receipts are dividend which dividend is credited to pnl revenue receipts are credited to pnl so revenue receipts are post acquisition dividend post acquisition dividend and revenue receipts include sell of right sell of a right so in the books of the buyer who buys the right the amount paid to the company as well as amount paid to the seller of right both of them put together is his cost so he pays something to the company what you pay to the company is known as exercise price exercise price the price at which you can buy the shares and amount paid to the seller so as i told you generally the proceeds from sale of a right are credited to profit and loss account there does exist an exception exception is sell proceeds of right this is first amount or decline in the value of shares this is second amount whichever of the two is low sell of right amount aa gaya decline in the value of investment decline in the value of investment from which date date of purchase of shares till the date of right normally as a result of right value of shares does come down because 
there is a some bonus element in the right issue right issue generally is at a lower price than the fair price of the shares so decline in the value of shares or sell proceeds whichever is lesser whichever of the two is lesser so you have to find decline and sell value lower of the two but so if there is no decline this exception does not apply so whichever is lesser is credited to investment account if additional conditions are fulfilled shares were purchased on कम राइट बेसिस जिन शेयर्स पे आपको राइट right मिला है वो शेयर्स आपने कम राइट right पे खरीदे थे द राइट हैव बीन सोल्ड दैट इज वाई यू हैव सेल प्रोसिड्स ऑफ राइट एंड देर इज अ डिक्लाइन इन द वैल्यू ऑफ शेयर्स नाउ नॉर्मली वेन द शेयर्स बिकम एक्स राइट एग्जामिनर शुड गिव यू डिक्लाइन इन द वैल्यू और यू शुड ही शुड गिव यू मार्केट वैल्यू एट दैट टाइम आवर नॉन सेंसिकल एग्जामिनर आई एम प्राउड टू से दैट डू नॉट गिव the decline in the value of investment they just say shares were purchased on come right basis so for exam purpose for exam purpose if shares on which shares on which rights have been received have been received where purchased on come right basis come right matlab after announcement of right issue if the shares on which rights are received have been purchased on come right basis then credit proceeds of sell of right credit proceeds of sell of right to investment account even though question is silent about decline in the value question is silent about decline in value of investment logically you should compare proceeds from sell of a right with decline in the value of investment but agar nahi diya to kuch nahi chup baitho aur क्रेडिट कर लो थैंक यू